Do you have a stash of thrift store frames and you're looking for some inspiration? Then you're in for a treat because in this video, I'm going to show you lots of creative ways to upcycle thrift store frames. You're not going to believe how easy it is to transform these into beautiful home decor. So we've got lots of work. Let's get started. This is a set of three picture frames that I picked up at the thrift store. The frames are all painted with what feels like maybe an oil-based paint and I'm going to make them nice and chippy and distressed looking. I picked them up for $5.99 a piece and they were 50% off so it's a really great deal and uh, let's get painting. I'm going to be using my homemade uh, chalk paint recipe and I've made it with some black paint and I'm going to put a base coat on all three of those picture frames. I've taken the landscape uh, picture out of the middle. It was just stapled in with little nails uh, so I removed those and I'm going to paint all three frames. I'll put a link down below and up above here in the corner for my homemade chalk paint recipe and it's really simple and it adheres to any surface so you don't need any prep or any sanding. And I'm also going to paint over all of these landscape print. These are just prints, they're not actual um, pictures. And now I've completed all pieces. Now when you're doing these frames, you don't want to use uh, sandpaper or sand too much because it takes away the details. So I like using this um, packing tape and I have a Scotch brand that works really well and I'm going to use some of my candle wax um, to distress it also. The first thing you want to do is I'm using a pillar candle that I just cut in half so it's a little bit easier to manage and I'm just going to rub it anywhere on the picture frame where I don't want paint to adhere. And I'm gonna do it pretty aggressive because I want a really chippy, distressed look on these frames. And I like using these little candlesticks because it will get in the little corners where you can't with that pillar candle. And you're just going to rub it anywhere where it would naturally, if it had aged, um, had paint removed. It's really great for getting in these little corners and it just gives it so much more of an authentic look when you can get in those little places. Whenever I'm out thrifting, I always seem to be drawn to these wooden picture frames and I love being able to do these types of different painting techniques to just take them to the next level to make them look really nice in your home decor. I'm doing really neutral colors today, just black and white, but you could use some really funky colors and layer up this paint with this technique and it would look fabulous. Now I've got my white homemade chalk paint and I'm going to paint right over that black paint and right over that candle wax that I just rubbed on and all those little nooks and crannies on that frame. And again, this is the same recipe as what I made with the black paint. Really simple, easy to make, and a lot more affordable than buying the store-bought, and it works just as good for me. And I'm not using any sort of technique when I'm painting these frames. I just kind of slop it on sometimes because you just kind of want to have that age look to it. And if it has a little drip here and there or a little spot where you've missed, that just makes it look even better. Okay, I'll finish painting that first one. And you can see I've kind of not put paint in every little corner. Some I've left a little black peeking through and I'm gonna work away on these other two frames. And I'm also gonna paint the middle pieces. I'm gonna put a little bit of wax on them also and then paint with the white chalk paint. And I'm going to use the packing tape now. And it just, when you put it on top of that white chalk paint with the wax underneath, when you press down that packing tape into that paint and then you tear it off, it will take little bits of the paint here and there and just give it that really cool kind of distressed look. Now I'm having a little bit of an issue today because it is really humid here, like really humid. It's almost 100 degrees and that tape is not sticking very well. So you're gonna see me struggle a little bit, but it does work very well if the humidity is not high. I'm just taking my scraper and just pressing that packing tape right into that paint and getting it adhered to that wax. So when I pull it off, you're going to see 
it leaves an amazing texture on that paint. And like I said, if it wasn't so humid today, um, I would have probably a lot better result, but you'll see um, how well it works in the end. If you just be patient and just kind of work away with this technique. Sometimes when you're doing these projects, it doesn't turn out exactly how you want it to because you can't control the weather, but um, I think it turned out really cool. And you can see some of the paint that it's pulled off on that packing tape and exposed a little bit of that black underneath and it just gives it a really nice old look. I love using this technique on frames that are really ornate. Um, you can't get into all those little corners with the sandpaper and you don't want to because you don't want to sand down any of that detail of the frames. So with using this, you don't destroy any of the wood, but you're still getting that distressed look. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever used this technique with the packing tape and how it worked out for you. Okay, I've finished up with the packing tape and now to do a little bit more detail, I'm just gonna take the side of my scraper and just lightly scrape away some of that white paint where there was any wax left that didn't come off with the packing tape. And again, that will leave a really cool kind of distressed look on the frame. And you don't wanna to apply too much pressure to scrape into that wooden frame. You're just trying to remove that top layer with the wax. And I'm just gonna keep working away at it until I get to the desired look that I like. Now that I'm all finished using the packing tape and the little scraper, I'm going to take a scotch pad and just lightly sand the whole frame and that will take any rough edges away. It's not gonna sand down much, it's just gonna kinda of give it a nice smooth finish. And I'm just gonna work away on these other two frames. And I have the three frames all finished and I'm really happy with the way they turned out. They look so chippy and distressed, but I haven't taken away any of that detail of the actual frame by sanding it down with any coarse sandpapers. I've just done it with the packing tape and with a scraper. Now I'm gonna get the insides of the frames ready and I'm going to scrape them down and distress them. And I'm gonna use these really beautiful uh, botanical prints that I got from the Graphic Fairy to put in the middle of them. To do these graphics, I'm gonna use my Mod Podge mat and do my reverse graphic transfer method. I love using this and I have lots of full tutorials on my channel. I'll put a link up above here and down below if you'd like to try it out so you can have a full detailed uh, tutorial step by step. My frames and my prints are all finished and I like to seal everything with a water-based polyacrylic sealer and it just uh, makes everything pop also when you put this on top. It brings out the little um, distressed edges and seals it really well for dusting. And I'm loving the way these turned out and I'm obsessed with these botanical prints. I think they look fabulous with these uh, distressed frames. So if you're out thrifting and you find some frames or you have some in your stash, give this technique a try because it works fantastic. These are the three frames that I'm going to work on. They're quite ornate and I'm gonna to try to bring some of that out with some different colors and some different painting techniques. And they're kind of dirty. I've had them stored in my shed since the summertime. So I'm gonna take a wipe and wipe them down really nice and clean and then get started painting them. This is the first frame that I'm gonna work on. I think all of these frames, I picked up at a yard sale. I don't think I paid over a dollar for any of them. Um, but what I'm gonna do with this one first is I'm gonna put a coat of my black chalk paint all over the frame and all over my piece of MDF board that uh, fits in the frame. So I'm gonna work away on that. My coat of um, black chalk paint has completely dried and now I'm going to put a coat of white chalk paint as the top base before I put my graphics on it. So I'll probably put two coats of the white on there. Now the reason I put the black on is when I distress it and sand it a little bit before I finish it, I like the, the black to kind of peek through and give it that antique old feel. 
Um, that's just my preference. You don't have to put that layer of black on when you're making signs. I just think it makes it look a little bit extra old. And I'm just going to work away and put two coats of the white chalk paint on top of this. I'm gonna use the candle wax method on this frame. I love this method. This is just a pillar candle from the dollar store that I've cut a piece off of. And you just wanna take it and I like to be really aggressive. Just kind of rub it all along the frame, wherever you think it would naturally wear. Um, and wherever you put the wax, your paint is not gonna adhere in those spots. So it's gonna make it look rustic and chippy. So I'm just gonna put a whole bunch on here. I want it all in that ornate part. So that will all show through. And you can see I didn't put the black paint everywhere. I kind of left some of the gold peeking through because I want that to show when I sand it all down also. So now that I've got the candle wax on, I'm gonna put a coat of my white chalk paint over the whole frame. Okay, my layer of white chalk paint has completely dried and I kind of like the look of it. It kind of had the stain leach through it a little bit got a really rustic look now. I'm going to, um, my trick when I'm doing the candle wax technique is to use the heat gun now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up that wax that's underneath that white chalk paint. And then I'm gonna take a scraper and I'm gonna scrape away and wherever there's wax, it's going to lift off that paint on the top and leave it nice and chippy and rustic looking. So I'm gonna work away on that. Now you can see when I'm scraping, I don't scrape this way, I scrape away and just very lightly. And as you're doing it, you can see that it pulls up all those different colors underneath. So it doesn't, there's not really any right or wrong way. You just keep kind of doing it until you like the look of it. And put your picture in it. Okay, this frame is all done and that's how easy you can create a plain wooden frame into something farmhouse chippy and rustic. I'm going to seal this now with a satin based polyacrylic sealer. Make sure you're using water based. If you're not using water based, you're using an oil base, it will yellow on you very quickly over time. So I'm going to put a nice coat over all of it, seal it up. This part's finished, and now I'm gonna work away on putting my graphic on the MDF board for the middle. This is the graphics that I have designed, and these are available in my Etsy store. If you wanna purchase these after, I'll have the link to all three of the graphics in the description. And so I've done this on my LaserJet printer. I've made sure to reverse the text. If you're buying them out of my Etsy store, they're already reversed. You don't need to worry about it. And I'm gonna use my Mod Podge mat to do the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer um, on this sign. I love the way that it turns out and it's so easy to do once you get the hang of it. When you're doing this technique, you just need to put a light coat on. You don't need very much. You just need just enough to cover all of the graphics and make sure you go right out to the edge of the paper. That will give you the best results and just cover your whole piece of paper. I've got this completely coated. I'm going to flip it over, make sure it's centered exactly where I want it. And then I'm just gonna rub out any bubbles or wrinkles. And then you're just gonna set it aside and I'm gonna let it sit until tomorrow before I take the paper off. This one has sat overnight. I just have a little dish of warm water with a little rag in it. And you just wanna dampen it just so you can start to see the graphics come through. And then you're gonna rub off all of the paper. I've got all the paper rubbed off this graphic and now I'm just gonna put a coat of my polyacrylic sealer on the top to seal it up really nice. 
I love the way this frame turned out with the candle wax distressing and then scraping it off. It looks perfect and a perfect graphic to add into it. Next frame that we're going to work on is this one. I think I am going to just leave this one gold and black. I'm not going to put any white on top of it. And I'm going to do the candle wax technique again. I'm going to put the candle wax right on this frame right now and then put the black on top of it. The black's all dry. What I'm going to do next creates an amazing finish and it's done with packing tape. You just take a piece of packing tape and you press it right into that frame, into all of those grooves. Press it down really well. And then when you peel away, you're gonna peel away little bits of paint here and there. So it looks like it's kind of worn off. And I love that look. So I'm gonna do that over the whole frame. I'm gonna do a little spot here to show you on the ends what it looks like. You're just gonna really press it right in there and then just find the end, peel it off. And that's what you're left with. This technique is so easy to do, no mess. Anywhere where there was a little bit of wax, the tape will peel it off. And anywhere where there's little bits of paint that haven't adhered very well, the tape will peel it off. And you can use the tape more than once. You can kind of use it a couple times and then it'll take less off when it's less sticky and more off when it's more sticky. You just kind of play around with it, but I love the effect that it gives. This one's all done. I'm gonna seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer and then I'm gonna work on the middle piece of MDF board to put the sign on next. I'm now gonna do the center board for this frame. I've pulled a lot of gold out in it. So I had some gold acrylic. I think that's what I'm gonna do as my base um, on this one. Do some maybe gold, some black, and then finish it off with a light coat of white. Okay, I changed my mind. I had thought maybe I was gonna put some black, some gold and some white. And then once I finished the gold and I put the frame up with it, I love it. So I'm gonna do my graphics right on top of this gold and do the Mod Podge reverse transfer method. So I'm gonna get my graphics printed off right now and get them on this board. I've got the next graphic printed off. This has got a lot of farmhouse feel. I love this one. Um, also available in my Etsy store if you're interested. I've had to print it out on two sheets of paper. I have a video on how you can size your graphics if they're bigger than a sheet of paper. I'll put a link down below in the description um, for how to do that. And it's really simple and really easy to do. So now I'm just gonna cut this out, place it where I want it, and put on the Mod Podge for the reverse transfer method. I've got it all on, all the bubbles and wrinkles are pushed out and I'm gonna set it aside till tomorrow and then we'll finish it off. Okay, now this one is sat for 24 hours. This is the one that I did with the gold background. I'm just gonna take my damp cloth and just put the water on it until you can start to see the graphics and then we're gonna rub away. Okay, I've got all the paper rubbed off on this. Um, sometimes when you're doing this technique, you can find that you might get a little bit of a white haze, especially if you're doing it on a darker background. I usually, when I'm doing this technique, I like to do it on a white background, but I kind of liked the gold with this frame. So what I do if I have a little bit of a white haze that I can't rub off, I will just take the paint that I was using and a little paintbrush 
and just kind of paint over those little areas and it'll all blend in and uh, look really nice. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. I've taken all that little white bits of cloudiness away and if you still see a little tiny bit, you don't have to worry. When you put a coat of the polycrylic sealer on, it will seal everything all up and a lot of that will go away. So I'm just gonna put a really good coat of polycrylic sealer on this. I'm so happy I chose the gold background on this. It looks fantastic with the gold accents in the frame. I just love the way that it turned out and I love this graphic. On to the next one. Third frame. I think I kind of want to keep it the wooden color and it looks like it's had maybe some plaster or something that has been kind of pushed in to these grooves. I'm going to give it a light sanding, bring that all up, get rid of some of this reddish color, um, just basically clean it up and then I'm going to coat it with some polyacrylic sealer to seal it all up. I'm just using a 80 grit sanding block and I've got some finer, I think this might be 120, and I'm just kind of working away on it. And you can see how this is really red and it's got like a gold tinge to it. Um, what I've done is I've sanded this right down and it's got rid of all of that gold, which I like much better. And I'm sanding down some of that reddish tinge and I'm really liking it. A Little bit of work, but it's gonna be worth it. I got it all done. I got a coat of the polyacrylic sealer on it. It's not perfect. I didn't get a lot of the red out, but it certainly looks better from when I started. And now I'm gonna paint the inside MDF. I've just squirted on some of my uh, acrylic paint in burnt umber. I'm gonna do that as a base coat. And then I'm gonna put a couple coats of the white chalk paint on top of it. So when I kind of sand it down a little bit, this brown will peek through and then I'll have the white uh, top. So we're gonna get busy. Okay, I've been struggling to try to get a nice color that I like on this uh, MDF board that's gonna go in this frame. And I didn't like the stark white. I tried to do some kind of dabbing of different colors and I wasn't really feeling it. And then I thought the color of the frame is almost like a cinnamon color. And that's when I'm trying to get a light cinnamon color. I grab my cinnamon and I'm just gonna rub it into that MDF board and see what that looks like as a base um, before I put my graphics on. Sometimes you just have to play around with different techniques and different, um, just try different things and sometimes you're surprised with how it turns out. And I kind of really like the color that this is turning. I'm just rubbing it into the paint isn't quite, quite dry. It's still a little bit damp. So that gives the cinnamon something to kind of stick to. I'm just kind of just rubbing it all over and then I'll brush off the extra cinnamon that's not staying on and uh, we'll be ready to put a graphic on it and I think that will give me the color that I'm gonna like. Okay, I really like it. It gives it a really kind of aged antique look. Perfect base for my graphics and you can put your graphics right on top of this. There's hardly any cinnamon left on this paint. It's just kind of worn right into it. So when we're doing the transfer technique, um, it won't rub off the cinnamon. It'll work perfect. So next step, graphics. I've printed my graphics all off, the same as all the other times on my laser jet printer. This is the graphic that I'm gonna use, but we have to reverse it. So I've sized it because this is bigger than a sheet of paper. I have the tutorial, I'll put that down below so you can figure out how to make your graphics bigger. And we're gonna use the Mod Podge mat and put it on the MDF board. Okay, now we're gonna work on the last one where I did the background with a little bit of that cinnamon color. I'm just gonna take my damp rag and just dampen it until I can start to see the graphics show through. And then we're gonna rub off all of that paper. I'm 
I've got all the paper rubbed off of this. Gonna put a nice coat of polyacrylic sealer on the top and then we're ready to put it in the frame. Adding the cinnamon into that paint gave it that extra special touch that it needed. And I love that I just kept the frame kind of natural and just sanded it down a little bit. I love it. I'm really happy with the way all three of these frames turned out. And like I said before, I probably paid a dollar for each frame and I had some scrap MDF that I cut to size to fit the frames. So they are really affordable to make. Sometimes I get the best results, just trial and error, trying out different things and they turn out in the end exactly how I want them to. Who would have thought that cinnamon would take this picture to the next level? I think it looks fantastic. Okay, we're ready to start this project. Um, I'm not sure about the frame. I might add another color on top once I get it all finished and I do my dried flowers and see what kind of colors pull out. I might put another coat on this, but for now I'm just gonna set that aside and we're gonna work on the graphics on this. So this was the inside of the frame. It's just the, uh, the backer. And what I did was I put one coat of black chalk paint and then two coats of white chalk paint and we're ready to put the graphic on and now i've printed my graphics off um i made my graphics and then i've printed them off on my laser jet printer and you have to make sure that you you reverse your text i just printed this off just to show you the quote that i made um and in a field of roses, she is a wildflower. And I thought that was appropriate when I'm gonna add all my dried flowers all along the bottom. And I printed it off on my laser jet printer, reversed the text, and I sized it to the size that I wanted for this um, piece of wood. And we're all ready to put it on with the Mod Podge. I'm just gonna cut it down to size so it fits better on the piece of wood. And I have a tutorial where I show you how I do my graphics and print them off on my word program and reverse the text. I'll put a link up above here and down below in the description. So if you're unsure how to do that, you can go back and you can check that out. To do the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer, I'm using the Mod Podge mat. I have a full tutorial start to finish that's really good to do um, a full size sign if you want to check that out. Um, but today I'm just kind of doing a fast version of it. You're just going to put a light coat over the whole graphic and then put it on the piece of wood and let it set overnight and then when it's finished you're going to take a damp rag and then rub off the graphics. Okay, I have the graphics all on. I'm just rubbing out any wrinkles or bubbles. It's all good. I'm just gonna set this aside, let it dry thoroughly. I usually lose it, leave it overnight and then we'll be ready to rub the paper off and we'll have a beautiful graphic. Okay, this is completely dry. And now we're gonna take a little damp rag and we're just going to dampen the paper just until you start to see the graphic show through. And I like to do it in sections. So I'm gonna do this section first and work away at it and you just rub it until all the paper comes off. And you just kind of go gently and just get the feel for it. And uh, it takes a little bit of a knack and a little bit of patience, but it works perfect. And as you can see, as you work away, all that paper rubs off and then the graphic is left on your project. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. I have the graphics all done and now we're ready to use the dried flowers that I pressed. 
um, from my garden and some wildflowers that I found out and around my house. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of lay them out, see how I like them, and then I'm going to Mod Podge them onto my piece of wood. So it'll all be incorporated into one and the frame will then go on when it's all finished. So I'm just going to work away on these dried flowers and see how I like them. I have them kind of set where I think I want to put them. So I'm just going to take my time and just Mod Podge them onto that board and I'll probably fiddle with it a bit, but I am loving the way that it's going to look and all the colors of those flowers. So I'm going to get my Mod Podge out. I have this set up so I have the base of uh, the dried flowers of how I want them. I'm using my Mod Podge mat and there's not really a real special technique to this. You just want to, now these are really brittle from when I dried them. I'm going to put a little bit on the back, just gently, because you don't want to break any leaves off. Just kind of pat it on. And then flip it over and kind of just place it where you want it. And then just gently, just take your paintbrush and just add the Mod Podge. Make sure you have a real good coat on it so it's going to stay put. And then we're just going to just do section by section and layer it on. After seeing all the colors of the um, dried flowers come together, I think I want to make a little pop of color on the frame. So I am going to use my baby wipes and I've got some pink acrylic paint and I'm just going to dry brush just on top of it because then I'll have like all three of these colors popping through. I'm going to have some pink, I'm going to have some black, I'm going to have some gray. And I think that'll really complement the uh, wildflowers and the um, pressed flowers that I have on the picture. So I'm going to work away at that. And I think that was a really good idea to add a little splash of pink to the frame. I think it's going to look really good with all those dried flowers in that graphic. And I'm ready to um, put this into the back of the frame. It's all dry. Loving the pink. That was uh, an amazing choice to do that. So I'm just going to put this in and then use my uh, hot glue gun just to uh, secure it back into the frame. I have a collection of some dried flowers, some faux flowers, and I think I'm just going to nestle them in between. It'll give it kind of more of a 3D look and it might brighten it up a little bit because I find some of the dried flowers, um, when I dried them, they kind of went a little bit darker. That's why I added a little bit of the acrylic paint to make the colors pop a bit. And I think this will finish it off really well. I'm just going to use a hot glue from my hot glue gun and just kind of place them where I think it's going to look the best. And all finished and that little splash of those artificial and faux flowers finished it off beautiful and I love it. It's so whimsical and so bright and I think it would look perfect in a little girl's room. 
This graphic is available in my Etsy store. If you'd like to purchase it, make sure you use the code SAVE50 and you can try a project like this yourself. So go outside and gather up some wildflowers and some flowers from your garden and give this a try. First project is this little mirror that I picked up at the thrift store. I think it probably originally came from the dollar store. It was 50 cents, I picked it up. I'm gonna turn it into some boho, beautiful decor. I took the mirror out and I'm gonna use some macrame cord. I had some cord left over from a project and it wasn't enough to do another hanger, so I'm gonna use it on this uh, thrift flip. I'm gonna cut a whole bunch of pieces the same length because we're going to do a lark's head knot all around the outside of that frame. Now that I've gotten them cut all to the length that I want, we're just gonna start putting those all around that little plastic frame these were made quite cheap from the dollar store and by adding this fringe on it, it's gonna really make it look high end and it's really simple to do. Might take 15 or 20 minutes to put together. And if you don't have any macrame cord, you can use twine, you can use yarn, you can use um, cut up fabric, just use your imagination. If you wanna use some macrame cord, I'll put a link down below in the description for my favorite. I've got them all tied on around the whole outside of that plastic frame. Now we're going to unravel all those ends so they can be nice and full. Grab a coffee or a tea and work away at this. I actually find it quite relaxing. I'm going to now just take my comb and brush it all out and then we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna cut all around the outside to make sure that it's all the same length. I'm just using my ruler here to use as I cut along so I'm making sure that it's gonna be all even. And make sure you have a really sharp pair of scissors. These ones aren't probably the sharpest. If you had a rotary cutter, that would probably work really perfect too and you could do it right on a cutting board. Now we're ready to glue that mirror onto the back of that frame just with some hot glue and it is beautiful. It looks so much better than that 50 cent mirror that I picked up at the thrift store. It now looks like a beautiful high-end piece of decor. Next project, I went to my recycling bin and I grabbed an empty egg carton and we're going to do something really beautiful with these. You've probably all seen these before. Did you know that you can make flowers out of these egg cartons and they look so beautiful when they're all done? I'm just gonna cut these into each individual little egg cups and then we're ready to start our project. I've got them all trimmed around the edges and now I'm just going to cut in each corner right down to the flat of the egg carton. It's gonna take quite a few of them, so just work away and make sure you have really sharp scissors. Okay, I've got them all cut and we're ready to put them together. You're gonna take your hot glue gun and put a little bit of hot glue right in the center and then you're gonna take another one and just kind of mold it a little bit and then put it so it's off-centered to the one below it so it looks like petals. You don't want them stacked up so the petals are together, you want them off-centered. Now we're gonna cut a strip off the top of that egg carton and we're just gonna roll it into a cylinder. Once you have it rolled together, put a little bit of hot glue in the bottom of that flower and then put your cylinder in there and you have a beautiful egg carton flower. So I'm just gonna work away at putting all of these together so I have enough to go completely around my project. And once they're all done, these are really tricky to paint. I'm gonna put them in the top of that eggshell container. I'm gonna take them outside and spray paint them with some black spray paint. And I picked up another one of those mirrors from the dollar store that were at the thrift store that I picked up for 50 cents. And we're just gonna glue those flowers all around the outside of that mirror. If you wanted to do different colors, you could take the mirror out of the frame, spray paint that round plastic part, and then spray paint your flowers so they would all match. The black fits my decor for where I wanna put it, so I left it all black. And look how that took that 
plain ordinary mirror to the next level with those beautiful egg carton flowers. I love picking up vintage frames, yard sales, garage sales, thrift stores, always pick them up, always have way too many, had this in my stash and I'm gonna turn it into a beautiful sign. I wanna change the color of the frame a little bit. It didn't have a back, so I cut a piece of wood to fit into the back. And I'm in, going to incorporate this old horseshoe that I found. It's seen better days, but it's gonna look beautiful when it's all finished on this sign. Everything's gonna get a coat of my black homemade chalk paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that. Everything's got a coat of black. I didn't completely cover it. I wanted a little bit of that white to peek through and my piece of wood that I cut for the center, I'm gonna put a coat of white chalk paint on that, set it aside, but the frame, we're gonna get working on doing some fantastic distressing. I always get so excited when I have a project like this and I can start layering up colors and painting techniques um, and excited about what it's gonna turn out like. I've got a couple different colors. I've got a yellow and I've got a rust color. I used this on another sign that I made last week. I loved it. So I'm gonna use these colors again. And I'm just going to just kind of hit and miss. I don't have to cover it completely, just here and there. And then when this color is dry, then I'll do the same thing with the yellow paint. That color's all dry. Now we're gonna just splash on a little bit of this yellow. We've got all those colors all layered on and now we're going to use hairspray. If you didn't see my tutorial on how to distress wood using hairspray, I'll put the link down below in the description. Works fantastic and it creates a beautiful crackle finish. What you want to do is you want to spray your hairspray over the entire frame and give it a really good thick coat. And then once you have it all covered, you wanna let it dry completely. Our hairspray is completely dry. Now I find this technique works best with acrylic paint on top. So I've got some white acrylic paint and you just wanna do long strokes. You don't want to put too many back and forth motions in it because we're trying to get a really nice crackle finish. And if you work it too much, you won't get the crackles showing up. So I'm just going to do long strokes over the whole frame until it's completely covered. And you can miss spots here and there because this is all about having a rustic finish. And I also find that this process works better if you use a heat gun to now dry that paint. If it dries faster, the crackles come out better. So I'm just gonna put my heat gun on a low setting. You don't wanna hold it too close and just dry. And as you dry, those crackles will appear. And look at the crackle that that hairspray made. I just love using that and it just makes everything look very authentic. I'm gonna distress it a little bit more. I have a squirt bottle, just some water in it, and I have a stiff stencil brush. I'm just gonna spray the water on the high areas and then just wipe away with the stiff brush and it just takes away that really stark painted edge and makes it look a little bit more worn. So I'm just gonna work away on that. And after I've wiped off the area with my brush, I just like to take the sandpaper. This is just, um, I think it might be a 80 grit and just lightly kind of just touch it on the high areas. 
I've got it the way I like it. I've just got a rag. I'm just gonna wipe it all down, dry it really well, and then I'm gonna seal it with my polyacrylic sealer. I designed this graphic. I'm gonna use my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. Live like someone left the gate open. I think that's really appropriate with the horseshoe and I'm gonna apply it onto the base of the frame. My graphic has sat, it's all dry. I'm gonna take a damp rag and just dampen it so you can start to see the, sh the letters show through and then start rubbing off the paper. Got everything all coated in polyacrylic sealer, the frame and the sign. And now I'm just going to adhere my horse shoe onto this with some E6000 hot glue and it's gonna be all finished. I love it. I love the way that this turned out and that painting technique really perked up that frame. The little horseshoe, that was something that somebody probably threw out and didn't think there was any potential to it. And I thought it would look perfect with this quote. Next thing that I'm gonna work on is these frames. I'm gonna take the backing out and um, spruce up the frames. I picked these up at the thrift store for $4.99 and they were 50% off. So I thought that was a really good deal for some really good solid wood frames. And they just have staples in the back, just using my pliers and I'm just gonna pull it out. I have them all taken apart and actually the prints in them were little cards. Um, they're kind of sun faded, but I kind of like them. I'm not gonna put them back in these because that's not kind of the style that I'm going for with these frames, but I'm gonna tuck these aside because I'm gonna use them for another project. Okay, now we're gonna work on the frames. I wanna keep this the color that it is. So I've got some painter's tape. I'm gonna tape it off so I don't get any paint on it. And then we're gonna do a distressed finish on the rest of the frame. We're gonna use the candle wax technique. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I love doing this to create chippy layered wood. And I like being really aggressive with it because I love that chippy look on all of my projects. I know it's not for everyone and you don't have to do this step. You can just, if you're, you're redoing frames, you can just paint them just a plain color, but I like to add a little bit of jazz to it. I've got all the wax on and now I'm gonna put a coat of the black chalk paint over the whole frame. And wherever there's a little bit of wax, that paint is not going to stick there. So you're gonna get that layered look of that paint color underneath. The coat of black is all dry. I'm gonna use another coat of wax, just gonna kind of put it everywhere. And then I'm gonna put a coat of white chalk paint on. These are all dry. We're going to use our packing tape to create the chippy layered look on this. We're having a snowstorm here. I don't wanna take these outside to my shed and sand them. So when you use this technique, you don't have to use the sander at all. No mess, it's really easy and it creates a fantastic finish. I've put the layers of wax on it. What I like to do, I like to heat it up a little bit with my heat gun so the wax kind of gets a little bit melt, melted before we put on our packing tape. This is seriously so easy. You just get a piece of packing tape and you rub it right into the wood and then you just Take a corner of it and peel it. And as you do, you are left with a fantastic layered chippy look. Isn't that fantastic? So I'm gonna work away on both of these frames. If you like this kind of look, you have to try this on some frames because it just works fantastic. Look at the chippy layered look that it gives. 
Okay, let's finish these off. You don't always have to do a transfer method or decoupage. You can just print off really great graphics and put them in a picture frame with glass. That's what I'm gonna do with these. I've just, I designed these two graphics last week and that's what I'm gonna put in these frames. I'm just gonna cut them to fit and uh, I think they're looking, gonna look fabulous with this rustic kind of frame. And we're just gonna pull off the tape. I love that. I love the contrast of all the different colors. And they're all done. I love them and I have a spot in my kitchen. I'm gonna keep these ones for myself. I'm now gonna work away on this ornate tray. I love the details in it, but I think I'm gonna be able to make these details pop a little bit more. I'm gonna use some wax. It's just an old pillar candle. And I'm just going to go along the edges a little bit. So when I put the paint on, it won't adhere to wherever there's some wax. I'm gonna put on a coat of acrylic metallic paint. This one is in spun gold. I've got two coats of gold on this and the candle wax underneath it. And I'm gonna put another coat of the candle wax on top of this gold before I put on my last coat. Okay, and now I've got some baking soda paint mixed up and I'm just gonna put a coat all over it. Just kind of slop it on. This is kind of a watery mixture of the paint, but that's okay. I didn't want it to be on thick. I wanted it to go on really thin because I'm trying to get a really aged kind of look on this tray. Everything is completely dry. I'm gonna take my sanding block and just give it a light sanding and anywhere that there was wax, that paint is gonna come off and it leaves a fantastic rustic look. And I'm bringing up that gold and that black. Okay, I have this all finished and distressed and I'm gonna do a fun technique with this. I'm gonna make these raised edges kind of look antique and rusty and I'm going to do it with cinnamon and Mod Podge. Now I just put a little bit of the cinnamon in just a plastic dish and I've got Mod Podge matte. You can also use school glue, that works fine too. Um, and I'm just gonna take a little paintbrush and just kind of rub it along wherever there's high spots. I want that Mod Podge just to stick on those places. I don't want it to be all over the whole project. So I'm just kind of, just lightly, just kind of brushing it on. I want it to give it a rusty antique look. I'm gonna put some in the corners here and here. And then before it dries, you don't want it to dry because the cinnamon won't stick to it. Um, I'm gonna sprinkle the, the cinnamon on it and it's gonna give it a really neat aged look. I'm just gonna get some underneath here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take a little pinch and just sprinkle it all over. I got all the cinnamon all sprinkled on and now I'm just gonna let it sit and dry. It's completely dry and I'm just gonna take an old paintbrush and just kind of wipe away any of that, that that's still laying on top and it leaves it looking nice and old and rusty. I added a little bit more Mod Podge and cinnamon. I wanted it to look a little bit more rusty. 
and I'm really happy with the way that it's turned out now. And now I'm going to put a graphic in the middle. This is the graphic that I'm going to use. Smile, sparkle, shine. This is just printed off on my laser jet printer. If you've been following along, you know that I love my reverse Mod Podge transfer technique. That's what I'm going to do on this. And I'm just going to cut this out to fit my project and then use my Mod Podge mat to uh, place it on the tray. My tray is all dry, it's sat overnight, and now I'm ready to rub the graphic off on it. And this is all ready to seal with a polyacrylic sealer. All finished, and if you haven't tried that little trick to use cinnamon to make it look like it's rusty and old, give it a try, because it works perfect.